Welcome to Lists on Lists on Lists, a presentation on using commas in lists by Mr. Singleton and Mr. O'Hara. It always seems to me like every time I was in a classroom, my teacher had another rule or another exception about commas, something else I had to remember, another trick to make commas work. What I want you to remember today is a huge concept that's very easy to remember. Commas separate ideas. If you remember that, using commas will be much easier for you. One of the greatest misconceptions about using commas is that they are only used to separate single words. While they are used to separate single words, sometimes they are also used to separate ideas. It's helpful to think of commas as separating ideas as opposed to separating single words. So don't think of commas as just little speed bumps that you have to go over to get through a sentence. Think about commas as tools that we use to make our writing clearer, to separate our ideas in order to benefit our audience. There are three basic types of lists in which we use commas to separate ideas. Verbs, nouns, and adjectives. Let's first take a look at verbs. If you remember way back to elementary school, verbs are action words like run, jump, laugh, hit, think, gesture, look, is, am. Anything you can do is a verb. If you all remember a few years back, there was a man from Japan named Kobayashi, and he was famous for eating, I think it was 53 hot dogs in like under 15 minutes. He was crazy. He owned country fairs all over the country. Here's a rule that we're going to look at before we talk about Kobayashi. You must use commas to separate verbs to make it clear that the three or more actions are separate ideas. So once again, we're using commas to separate ideas, this time specifically about actions. Kobayashi dipped the hot dog in water, shoved it into his mouth, and chewed it vigorously. This is kind of a wordy sentence, but let's break it down a little bit and look just at the verbs. What are the actions that Kobayashi is doing? Kobayashi dipped, shoved, and chewed the hot dog. If we take out all the extra language, these are the three actions that Kobayashi is performing. He dipped, shoved, and chewed. If you look, we have three verbs. We need to use two commas in between the three verbs in order to separate those completely different actions. If you have three verbs in a sentence, you need to have two commas to separate those three verbs. If you have 50 verbs in a sentence, you'll need to have 49 commas to separate those verbs. So what happens when you don't use commas to separate three or more verbs? If you don't use commas to separate your ideas, your ideas can run together and just get smashed into an unrecognizable sentence. Look at this one. Alan zipped locked and put away his suitcase. I'm not sure what this sentence means. Are they trying to say that Alan put his suitcase in a ziplock and then put it away? Or did he put all his clothes in ziplock bags instead of a suitcase? The meaning of the sentence is not clear because they don't have commas and I'm not sure where one idea stops and the next one begins. We use commas to, to join verbs into one sentence uh, in order to make our writing more concise. It's much easier to say that Alan zipped, comma, locked, comma, and put away his suitcase instead of making three sentences that would read, Alan zipped his suitcase, Alan locked his suitcase, and Alan put away his suitcase. But in order to combine three ideas into one sentence, we have to use commas to separate those ideas. Here's comma concept number two. How do we make lists out of nouns? A noun is a person, place, or thing. So this would be something like a book, baseball, internet, love, dog, baller. Uh, here's the rule for using commas to separate nouns. You need to use commas to separate three or more nouns. And once again, this is so your audience knows that these are three separate things. You don't want your ideas to run together. Subway Jared ordered a bag of chips, two foot-long subs, and a large drink. This seems like a ton of food even for one person, but I'm willing to give him a break and say maybe he's buying for two. Let's break down this sentence and look just at the specific nouns that Subway Jared is ordering. He ordered chips, subs, and a drink. You'll see there's three nouns there, chips, subs, drink, and we use two commas to separate those three nouns. Just like verbs, if you have three nouns, you need to separate them with two commas. If you have 50 nouns, you need to separate them with 49 commas.
So what happens when you don't use commas to separate three or more nouns? Well, your sentence will not be clear. Andy ate boiled spinach apples and macaroni and cheese. Because there are no commas in this sentence, I have no idea where one idea stops and the next one starts. And I don't know what a spinach apple is, but I for sure do not want to eat one boiled. And uh, I would much rather eat the Kraft Box macaroni and cheese on the stove than just eating raw macaroni and chunks of cheese. Our third and final comma concept is how to make lists using adjectives. And this rule is slightly different than the previous two. An adjective that is a word that describes nouns. So here's our list of nouns from the last slide, uh, but we added adjectives to describe these nouns. For example, a heavy book, an old baseball, vast internet, true love, a bad dog, or a ball and baller. Adjectives describe nouns. And in this rule, you must use commas to separate two or more adjectives that describe one noun. This is two or more for adjectives. So the child needed more leafy green vegetables is a sample sentence. Leafy and green are both adjectives that describe vegetables. And here's a little trick to the rule to let you know whether you need a comma or not. If you can change the order of the adjectives, if you can switch their places, then you do need a comma. Here's an example. The child needed more green leafy vegetables. So up above we have leafy green vegetables, and here we have green leafy vegetables. If you can switch the order and the sentence still makes sense, then you need to put a comma in between those adjectives. So what happens when you don't use commas to separate two or more adjectives? Let's take a look at one of my childhood favorite cartoons, Clifford the Big Red Dog. Clifford is a big red dog. You see that sentence? There's something wrong with that sentence. We have two adjectives, big and red, and they're both describing the same word dog, but there's no comma. The way this sentence reads right now, it's saying that Clifford is a dog that is literally big red. He is made out of the soda, or he's their corporate sponsor, or something like that. What we're trying to say is that Clifford is a big, comma, red dog. He is a big dog and a red dog. We need to have a comma in between big and red. Also, if you notice, we could switch those two adjectives and say that Clifford is a red big dog, and that would make just as much sense. So, because you are able to switch those adjectives, you need to have a comma in between them. Now you practice. Here's an excerpt from Lord of the Flies. Ralph wept for the end of innocence, the darkness of man's heart, and fall through the air. Teachers, please pause this presentation, and students, take a minute to decide where the comma should go on this sentence. Here's correct comma usage. This is using two commas to separate three nouns. We see here the nouns have been highlighted in green. Fall, darkness, and end. Because those are the three nouns in this sentence, we need to separate them with two commas. One comma should go after the word innocence, the other one should go after heart. And that's just to separate these three different ideas. Here's another excerpt from Grapes of Wrath. Teachers, please pause the presentation, and students, take a minute to decide where the comma should go in this sentence. The rule that applies to this sentence is using correct commas for verbs. In this sentence, there are three distinct verbs that apply to the subject of man. Grows, walks, and emerges. Because there are three verbs, we need to use two commas to separate those three verbs. One comma should be after work, and the other one should be after the word concepts. Here's one more example. Students, please take the time to practice this one last example. Teachers, you may pause the presentation. The rule that applies to this sentence is using the correct comma for adjectives. Remember, the rule for adjectives is a little bit different. You need to use a comma if there are two or more adjectives. So here, they stopped at an oak tree, delighted, 
puzzled, apprehensive. Delighted, puzzled, and apprehensive are three adjectives that describes they. There are three adjectives, so we need to use two commas. If there were only two adjectives, we would still need one comma. So at this point, you might be asking yourself, why does it really matter where I put commas? Um, commas are confusing. Uh, they, they might cause more anxiety than they do good. Why do we need commas? Hopefully, some of the misconstructed sentences in this presentation have helped to answer that question. You, as a writer, should care about using commas because it makes your writing more clear and more accessible to your audience. If you want people to know what exactly what you're saying, use commas for clarity. Commas separate ideas, not simply words on a page.